History can sneak up on you sometimes. Consider, on May 2, 1983, the New York Mets entered the bottom of the ninth inning down 3-2 to two against the Houston Astros in Shea Stadium. The Mets had a fighting chance, and manager George Bamberger was determined to make the most of it. So the skipper pulled catcher Ron Reynolds due up first in favor of another reliever, Ron Hodges. Hodges promptly signaled to the right field, which brought up the pitcher's spot. Now Mike Torres had tossed nine strong innings, and he was a decent hitter as pitchers went. Lifetime batting average of 172 entering 1983. But no way that Bamberger was going to leave chance to a tie or win or in the hands of a hurler. So in came a pinch hitter, specifically young Jose Oquendo, just called up from the AAA Tidewater Tides. Interestingly, Okendo was a typical light-hitting, slick-fielding middle infielder so in vogue through the 1980s. He fit the mold so well that he had struggled to hit 200 in nearly every one of his minor league stops. Still in all, he was the man of the moment, and that moment being an ascent rally that converged precisely with his major league debut. Against Astros reliever Frank Lacorte, who had spelled starter Nolan Ryan in the eighth, the rookie managed a grounder to the left side of the infield, good enough to force Hodges at second. At least Okenda was fast enough to beat the throw to first. He wasn't fast enough to get back to first when Mookie Wilson lined the pitch to Stroh's third baseman Phil Gardner, though, and Scrap Iron started the double play that ended the Mets' day. By that point, however, history had already been made. What history was there to be had in the fizzled ninth inning rally by a terrible Mets team, you ask? Well, Okendo was just 19 years old when he made his debut, born on July 4, 1963 in Rio Pedras, Puerto Rico. In case you forgot your amazing history, the Mets played their first game ever on April 11, 1962. Doing the math, Okendo was younger than the Mets franchise when he dug in against La Corte, and he was the first player who could ever make that claim. Okendo would hold sole membership to that club for a while, too. Daryl Strawberry, who would debut four days after Okendo came close. Straw is about a month older than the Mets themselves. It wasn't until the next season when 19-year-old Dwight Gooden and 21-year-old Sid Fernandez helped the Mets vault into contention that Okendo finally had some company. And by that point, he was making cardboard history, too. Okendo's rookie card in the 1984 Topps, Fleer, and Donner sets are the first cards to show a Mets player who was younger than the team itself. Maybe this powerful bit of trivia is where Okendo got his secret weapon moniker. Like our video? Then like our video and subscribe to our channel. WaxPackGods.com